Oh, interesting. Chaos's version does not say this meeting is being recorded. That is interesting. Because my university says this meeting is being recorded. And you have to click to accept. That's what the VMware one does too. Yeah, that's interesting. So, oh. so I guess we can do surveillance. Uh, it's easier certainly this way with that open community. Um, so uh, we did just do a major release of Augur. And uh, inside that major, inside that major release are a couple of big improvements to the way that we uh, install Augur. So um, so for example, when you create an Augur instance, uh, once you have all your stuff installed, you, you create a virtual EMV. And you activate it. And you clone Augur if she does. Augur demo. I'm just making Augur demo. You should share your screen and then I can see what you're doing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All of a sudden, it occurred to me that you were telling me what's going on um, and that you uh, probably meant to share your screen. I totally meant to share my screen. <laughs> I was like, this feels like a demo, but without the demo part. Yeah. So what we did is <laughs> just created our virtual environment and um, cloned Augur into a directory, um, activated the virtual environment. And so the way that you would, the way that I install Augur, you can install Augur for a production environment. Like if you just got a server and you're running it, you can just do make uh, install. And if you do make install, you you end up with your Augur.config uh, Augur.config.json in your home directory under a dot Augur directory. So I probably have one of those. Uh, and that would be my default augur.config.json. But generally speaking, when I install it on the server, I install the dev environment because I want to have all the extra error checking. And I also want my augur.config.json to be in my home directory of my augur. So when you do make install dev like that, it's going to ask you a whole bunch of, it'll first install a bunch of libraries. And what's what's coming down the pipe with Augur while this runs is we have a machine learning branch that includes a clustering worker that groups repositories that have similar conversations with each other. It also we also have a, a message analysis worker that uh, clusters messages within a repository, and a a pull request analysis worker that does predictive analysis on the likelihood of a pull request being merged into a repo based on quantitative statistics of the history of of that repo. And I have really no idea why it thinks I've already got an Augur config <laughs> Um I did install dev, didn't I? you did all right i'm gonna just say yes and then uh, i'm going to connect to an existing database and only install the schema which will require me to jump over here to make the schema so I use Navicat, which I find to be a really easy database tool. There's millions, millions of them out there, but you can use you can use whatever you want. But Navicat makes life super easy. Your user and your COVID. Uh, I'm sorry, your Augur user and your password 
which was which was created in the earlier steps in our documentation. Localhost is typically the case, and we use a lot of uh, port uh, port five four three three instead of the default. There's a number of reasons for that. Most of them amount to um, Ubuntu uh, always having an earlier version than I want of Postgres installed and me being too lazy to go through the trouble of uh, re, you know, uninstalling and reinstalling or changing the port. And then you take a GitLab API key, which you know, I guess I'm giving them away here, but you know what? If somebody wants to steal these keys, I can get another one. So, uh, and then existing directory or new directory. Usually, I go with new directory, and I have I have a home shop repos directory that I use uh, for these kinds of things, and it spins up all the things running running through your database. So the yeah the the machine learning workers that are coming are pretty exciting. I've also got some students working on new versions of the Augur front end, and we are getting close to releasing the um, a set of APIs that allow you to just hit them and uh, get Augur community reports uh, directly from the API in a in the form of a PNG file. So all you need to know is your repo ID and you can go to town and we're pretty excited about that um That's pretty cool yeah obviously we still have our licensing worker which is a distinct uh, analysis and we're, we're also doing some work on the slack bot to make that a little bit easier for people to understand how to configure and carter has done a great deal of work on documentation um andrew is the one who built all of the um uh the api endpoints that generate images and we also have a log analyzer that someone from vmware uh has a pull request open for that is going to get merged very soon so that there'll be a standard logging architecture so you can see what's running on your auger instance and what's not uh anytime you install auger because we're using node.js you will get a series of errors and uh, as long as it succeeds, you can ignore them. Oh, hey, the other thing I noticed um, is that the, the Augur front end doesn't seem to work anymore. On uh, your instance? Yeah. Is it still uh, pivotal.osshealth.io? You know what? OK, so for that, I moved your server to collect the data to run the reports. And yep. I, I have not moved the resolution of that domain name over to the new server. So okay. I can I can do that. In fact, that would be a great part of the demo. There's nothing uh, secret about that. So and we uh, should also we should actually rename it to VMware. Yeah, and we can do that. Um, sorry. Sorry, that's my text. Um, so if we were to run this instance, it would be. No, this is all in the documentation, uh, which can be found at uh, readthedocs.io. And so at readthedocs.io, <clears throat> you have REST API documentation for the endpoints. So if you want to build your own front end like many people do, we're also working on a development guide improving that. Uh, you can run it entirely on Docker. And of course, these are your regular, regular steps. So to run it, it's just no hub. Augur, it used to be Augur run, and we've changed it to Augur backend start because that makes it more, we just think that's an easier, it's more standard uh, command language. And you can output it to no hub or whatever. I always do the log directory, Sean.log, and oops, I don't know if the space. And uh, the log directory, Sean.error, just because I know if I see those files, then something went terribly wrong. Um, oh, and <clears throat> before I do that, I should point out that you have uh, 
um, a series of ports. So if you're running more than one Augur instance, for example, you're going to want to change the port and uh, for the main server. And then each of the workers also has their own port number. So for if you're only running one instance of Augur, you can just leave all of the defaults. Um, but if you're not running, if you're running multiple instances of Augur, you just want to have obviously each of the workers on distinct ports. You can also accelerate collection with Augur by having multiple workers in each case except facade. And we recommend basically the defaults that we have are what we recommend for the first run. And it'll go through your commits, your pull requests, your issues. And then on the, after it's collected all of that stuff, that's when we recommend turning on the contributor worker <clears throat> because you'll have all of the users gathered at that point. And the contributor worker's whole focus is resolving different individual identities. Uh, so if I use 12 email addresses, I can have them all resolve um, to the same identity, presuming I've, I've got an identity on GitHub or GitLab. And the contributor worker, have we have we gotten that to run on my instance yet? I haven't run it all the way through. Okay. Um, I know we keep we keep stopping it so that we can run the pull request. <laughs> so one, I mean, there's like often with software, there's like all all these little things that are new behind the scenes. One of the things that that Gabe and I did is I did a ton of PF Postgres analysis and created a, a ton of new indexes. Um, that make the contributor worker go a lot faster. Oh, good. So the you know really the issue was that the contributor worker was having to do a lot of full table scans, and uh, we were working on we were fo focusing on working software that works just fine with samples like the chaos organization. Yeah. And when you turn it on three thousand repos, it chokes a little bit. So we we've, we've optimized. We've added a number of indexes that have like remarkably improved performance. I've I've been through a collection of 7,000 repos with the contributor worker uh, at this point. So, and so that's exciting. But when it comes to the rest of the configuration, um, let me let me go and make the let me go fix the make it VMware make the VMware server because there's an extra step involved in in doing that. So, I'm going to go to A different a different server and and I'm not going to assume I remember its IP address so um, here's the IP address I'm going to change where there is a there is a VM where actually I might have it pointed already to the new server but I'm just going to not disclose all of the domains uh, on the recording and switch over to my screen that's not shared. Sha manage domains. OSSL. What I'm doing is I'm just making sure that the entry for vmware.osshelp.io is uh, pointed at the correct server. And I have a vague recollection of actually doing that, but uh, well, my vague recollection is entirely incorrect. Um, <laughs> all right, so I've, I've moved uh, VMware over. And so now I'm going to go to the GitHub environment and chaos this is just my structure you don't have to structure it this way but i keep track of i work with a lot of github orgs and repos and it's just easier in most cases for me to keep them underneath uh, i do the same i do the same thing because i've yeah. got like kubernetes repos and knative repos and chaos and yeah exactly okay. so um And actually, what I'm going to do is um, uh, 
coming uh So I, I oh um okay it looks it looks like I my my brain broke <laughs> all right and so uh, okay we're just showing passwords on the recording I know yeah I'll have to go back in and and uh, fix that. Um, so this is your server. And the key is for the front end, there's one thing you need to change in Augur when you have a domain resolution. And this is for Nginx. Um, is you have to put in the front end block um, the name of the host that you want the front end to resolve to. And so it's vmware.osshealth.io. And then you need to go to, let me just uh, make sure I've got that directory there. In Nginx, there's a directory called sites enabled. Okay, let's see Nginx sites dash. Enabled. Okay, wait a minute. I'm looking around here. Uh, oh, okay. I may not have installed Nginx on the server. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to run it behind Nginx, you need to install it on the server. This was a minimal <laughs> install. Um, uh, and uh, so now I should have that directory. If I can say it's oh. typing, not, a, not an early morning <laughs> skill for me. All right, and so I'm just gonna go over to a different server and let's see. And I'm just going to copy the uh, config so I don't have to remember everything and bring it back over here. Pseudo VI um vmware.osshealth.io and then all i have to do is change this to vmware i feel like i'm vm there's a w missing yeah oops keep missing the w oops yeah this this i don't know this new server i installed that's something like, I don't know if they up, quote unquote, upgraded the eye and, and uh, made my life harder or. Nobody has to know that VMware.OSSHealth.io is behind an Augur Pivotal directory. <laughs> nope, um, fine. And uh, what we'll do then is we'll build the distribution. Uh, so you have to compile all the NPM stuff into um, uh, when you do via uh, npm run in run build it will build everything for you so then i just do a sudo nginx dash t to make sure i did it right and um, i do a sudo nginx restart and then I have to go back to GitHub Chaos Augur Pivotal front end. And 
it doesn't do this by default because npm install first you have to install the npm stuff because not everybody runs a website off of it now our front end is not i'm not going to pretend our front end is this giant um, innovation space for uh, human computer interaction right now <laughs> and a lot of people run auger um, without uh, and it looks like actually actually it looks like i already did a, a run i built the distribution um, so I, i'm just gonna go to vmware dot oss help dot io and see if it's there <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. But it might be that it's resolving and okay, so it's resolving from here, but it may not be This is all from here for me too. So um, every time I set up a brand new server, there's this one little v, there's this one little nginx step, uh, which may be in the docs. Oops. Okay, I guess it moved me over here because I had the window open already. I know there's an Nginx page web server configuration. All right. So there's there's some modification to the nginx.conf that we've documented that I didn't do. to do this. Yeah, it's not going to let me do that because I didn't sudo. <laughs> We've worked so hard to make almost nothing you need to do with Augur require sudo that whenever I, it's required, I uh, forget about it. All right. So sudo nginx t just to text that I didn't screw up the configuration. And then here. Since I changed the major configuration, just restart it for good measure and see if I have better luck. Controls are rare. <laughs> and welcome to the real life troubleshooting of <laughs> Nginx configuration. Health.io. Sean, GitHub. Oh. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Apparently, apparently somebody else is using the using our our account right now oops uh, what i forgot was uh that on this server i've so the, the first server that you on was originally was one of our very first servers and i just did the auger instance name without putting chaos in there. Ah, uh, there you go. So I was pointing everything to a non-existent directory. Um, often leads to failures. <laughs> uh, oops. All right, 
we should be good now. Um, let's try it again. Oftentimes, we just uh, sometimes I have to bring up Chrome, which has not been working on this. Auger cache, here we go. Wait a minute. This is not, is this you? No, this is not nope. you. Uh, oh, there's a new step. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there's two things. One is um, Auger Util Init Init Add. Oh, okay. I'm on the wrong. No, I'm on the right server. Okay. I just can't spell activate. Green. <laughs> okay. So, uh, auger util init front end. Uh, auger. I think there's a, I think it's auger config. I think I was right the first time. I just wasn't in a VM. And so what that does is it copies the key components of the auger.config.json to the front end directory, which allows us to have multiple different front ends on auger. Um, And so you see it just copies the main components. It copies the default. So here again, I have to do vmware.osshealth.io, which is a little redundant, and we'll fix that in a future release. And then you need to do an npm run build. After that config, anytime you update the port or the domain, the subdomain or domain resolution for an auger instance, you have to do an npm run build because the, the domain itself gets compiled into the, the JavaScript. So the JavaScript is dynamic. You can run it on any server, but there are places, of course, where if you're showing pages that call endpoints, that those pages have to know where those endpoints are. And if you compile it, it goes a lot faster. So, all right, so that finished. I believe I'm, I'm feeling super confident that this will go to the right place now. Uh, I can't get Chrome to work. There we go. It, uh, I had to get rid of my cached data um, from before. Augur does cache a lot of data, so I use Chrome for testing a lot of times uh, just to clear my cache. But now you can see that VMware.osshealth.io is all up and running. Sweet. And, and uh, has all your stuff. Um, there's some front end work that we still have to do. It, it doesn't, um, it's not as fast and responsive. And there are some things with Webpack that we know we need to do to, to speed that up. But honestly, I don't think, I think most people are using, if using Augur for um, smaller scale. Uh, examination and the people who are really like collecting on a lot of repos are are doing so um, they're using like Augur community reports or they're writing their own queries or they're hitting the API endpoints um, and one one final thing before I stop recording 
Yeah, this, this, uh, I have an issue open for somebody to please, 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 please like go through and do all the optimizations that are necessary on our front end. Uh, there we go. Because here we've got a gem XD a total commit count of 10. Hey, and there we go, we can see it. And it's probably a new one, so I probably haven't run the licensing worker against it, but we're starting to get the code available or the information available. Oh, I do, I did run license coverage on it. Yeah, that, then, that repo's been there for a while. Yeah. It's, it's just a tiny one. I think it's inactive. Yeah, but it does have 56% license coverage, not bad from what I've seen. Um, not a lot of issues or any, it looks like, but it's like you dumped the code and that was the end of it. <laughs> but we so that, have a lot of repos that we just need to go through and archive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Understandable. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's basically the full configuration of Augur. And the, I, there was one other thing I thought I was going to show, but I can't remember what it is right now. Um, you can compare it to other repos, but that's been there for a long time. I just don't know if everyone's aware of the awesomeness of what we have. So you can, because there are no issues in the smaller repository, you'll see um, uh, Arcanist code changes pretty high and looks like some development has stopped. And uh, then Actually, Gem, FireX, OSS, these code line changes seem to begin right at the same time that this project ends, oddly. Um, hmm. who, can, who can explain that? It looks like there weren't a whole lot of PRs run against this uh, Bitnami Arcanist repo. This could be a, this could also be an archive repo. Um, it might be. For, for all I know. But yeah, and uh, I don't know. I don't think I've run the insight worker yet, so I don't think we have any insights for you. Oh, we did. We ran it. So you have some insights that you can get, and you can also sign up for push notifications at Augie uh, once I release the next version of that. So these are these are all the exciting things happening with Augur. Thank you for well. joining, joining our call today. Um, <laughs> hopefully you got a little bit of uh, additional info about how to configure your Augur instance and um yeah get out there and auger away <laughs>